sometimes if you play, they will, uh, they will actually sing along. Maybe I'll have to howl to make them do it. I heard a little something. Oh, hey, I'm Patrick Fabian. I'm sitting here today in my backyard with two of my favorite canines. This is Star on my right, and this is Lucky, her mom, on my left. Star is the, uh, the runt of a litter of eight that Lucky gave birth to about four years ago. Star's trying to get away, but I won't let her. We're here for the camera. Look at the camera. We were shooting season five, a Better Call Saul, about three years ago, and we were shooting out in the high desert. Uh, at a reservation called Tahajali. It was 110 degrees for about two weeks running and they were shooting out in the desert. And this one came out of the desert and sat underneath the production vehicle so she could get some shade. So Bob Odenkirk, who plays Saul Goodman, he said, we should, we should rescue this dog. So we made sure the dog wasn't owned by anybody on the reservation. And they said, sure, you can take that dog. And so she came home to live with Bob Ray Seahorn, who plays Kim Wexler on the show, and myself, because we all shared a house. We took the dog to the vet and turns out she was pregnant. Vet said she probably had about three puppies in her. And we were like, well, this will be fun. So we get, you know, all the dog beds and all the dog toys, and we're gonna have a great little time nursing her as she uh, has her puppies and Bob and I expressly told Ray Seahorn that don't worry we'll all be here whenever Lucky gives birth. Uh, I was in Santa Monica and Bob was in downtown Los Angeles on a beautiful Sunday afternoon where Ray Seahorn was the midwife to eight, eight puppies out of this one right here. She handled it wonderfully but basically the dog knows what to do right? The dog knew how to give birth, how to take care of the umbilical cords, all of that stuff. Ray was on the phone with us FaceTiming, showing us it was, it was kind of a nightmare. <laughs> but then we had puppies, we had eight puppies. Bob, Ray and I were so excited about coming home to find out what the puppies had done today, taking a thousand pictures, making sure we got up in the middle of the night to uh, make sure that the runt got a chance to eat before the big ones did. And so after 12 weeks, they were ready to be adopted. We put out a notice to everybody in Better Call Saul, and people came over and started looking at the puppies. And I don't know if you've seen a 12-week-old puppy, but all it says is, take me home. So all the dogs got taken, but, you know, Mama had just given birth to eight puppies. She was all sort of distended, you know, all of her hair was coming out at this point. They had sucked all the health out of her. And I thought, you know, no one's going to take the Mama. And the Mama had come off the desert. She lived with us. She gave birth. And she was really good. I never heard her really bark, never saw her nip at anybody, and I thought, this is a good dog. So I laid claim to Lucky then and there. And then my wife came out and saw Star, and you know, once you see that, she's coming home. So then we brought her back to Los Angeles. And now Lucky still remembers the desert because she tries to hunt every chance she gets. Star, I think Star thinks she was born in Malibu. Hey, I'm Patrick Fabian, and this is Would You Rather. Would you rather be able to read your dog's minds or never have to pick up their poop again? Oh, you know what? This is weird. But picking up their poop is an act of kindness. It's an act of saying, uh, okay, I'll take care of you. And I think that's important. Um, and I'm not saying that I like the feel of poo in my hands. I would never say that because that's weird. It's weird. Although sometimes, right? Come on. Uh, but I also don't want to know what they're thinking because I imagine it's like a thousand squirrels and monkeys playing chess and checkers at the same time. So, no. So neither. I would rather do neither. Would you rather have to sleep in your dog's bed for a month or eat their food for a month? My dog's shed. Everything I own has dog hair. And so I know I'm already sleeping in their bed, kind of. I'm certainly sleeping on their couch or sitting on their couch. And here's the thing. Their dog food, if I'm in charge of their, their, their dinner, sometimes they get some pretty good stuff. So, you know what? I would rather eat their food than, than, than lick their pillow. Would you rather Star or Lucky be president for a day? Oh, it's, it's never Star. Lucky, absolutely. Star? No. Star's not even in the cabinet. Oh, hey, welcome to my living room. I, I'm sorry, uh, to Star's living room. This seems like it should be my couch. Uh, she has a bed, it's right behind you. Can you see it over there? This is where I like to watch TV. The family likes to watch the TV. It fits four humans. Um, well, it fits three humans and a dog. And usually the four humans start off and then one of the humans decides they're going to have to vacate the premises because this, all of this. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, well, uh, much like the TV room, uh, this is the music room because it has a couple of guitars and a, and a piano in it. Um, the dogs have a very nice bed, expensive bed. It's right over there on the floor. Um, and it's got some dog hair, so I'll give them that. But clearly, here's another couch that they really prefer. Matter of fact, this is actually where Star sleeps every night. In the morning, I come down and she is sprawled out here. Well, speaking of sprawled, uh, there, Lucky, show them everything. There you go, good girl. Anyways, Lucky's really relaxed, but sometimes, sometimes, I can get them to sing along to the piano. Let's see. Shh, don't wake the dog. We're about to sing. The dogs, they sing on command. I guarantee it. Uh, actually, we discovered this. Uh, my kids take piano, and I've been taking piano as well. And sometimes, if you play, they will, uh, they will actually sing along. Maybe I'll have to howl to make them do it. something. That's it. Sing it, baby. Really? You're hanging me out to dry. Last chance. No, not convincing. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Hey, this is the portion of the show where we do tricks for charity. Today, the charity that I've chosen is Best Friends Animal Society. They're a great place to adopt a pet, and they do great, great things for no-kill shelters here in Los Angeles and across the country. What's the trick I'm gonna do? Let's see what, sit, let's see if I can get both dogs to sit and shake paws and roll over. How about that? Lucky, Star, come here. Well, that's a good start. Come here, no, oh, here, means here. No, Star, Lucky. I'm gonna change the trick. The change of the trick is gonna be this. I want the dog to be in a human chair and wag her tail. Let's see if she can do it. Lucky, can you wag your tail? I can get her off the chair, how about that? Hey, Lucky, get off the chair. What an amazing dog that is. Let's see what I can do with Star. Star, are you comfortable? She said yes, that's one. Star, come here. Star, sit. Oh, she came and she sat, that's two and three. Let's see if she wants her belly rubbed. Star. Show me your belly. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's four, five, and six. Are you kidding me? It feels like I've won. This is a very tough trick to do. Most animals don't like this, dogs in particular. But I've worked long and hard with her, and that's the kind of animal trainer I am. Way to go, Star. Close your legs. Whew. Well, I'm tired. I'm exhausted from all that trickery we just did. Uh, if you want to check me out on social media, follow me at Mr. Patrick Fabian on Instagram or Patrick Fabian on Twitter. And uh, the dogs don't have any social media yet. Thanks for watching.